So good morning. Hello. Brilliant, brilliant case today. Fantastic. This is a case of a C-shaped molar. Okay. And if you're unaware of what a C-shaped molar looks like, it's essentially if you were to kind of cut um, this tooth uh, axially, like sort of in, 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 in the sort of occlusal plane aspect of this tooth, you'll see that the root morphology of this is a C shape. Okay, so you can imagine that um, if you had a, a root morphology where there was no obvious distinct canals, but just one long ribbon shaped C kind of uh, root anatomy, that to, to clean that and to shape it and to obturate that tooth is actually incredibly difficult. So um, you'll see uh, with this case that um, actually when we get down to it, it all looks absolutely beautiful at the end and, and um, you'll see the, 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 the post-op um, just looks fantastic, okay? Um, I would say in this case, uh, the, the C-shaped uh, molar has um, undergone some kind of calcification inside. So luckily in this case, the kind of ribbon shaped anatomy wasn't as um, as extensive as say it would be with it in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, um, in a younger person. But um, essentially we managed to find three um, separate canals, large canals, and they all joined into one. And in fact, if you look at the uh, the cone beam CT scan here, you can see uh, the sectionals. You can see at the moment on this, you can only see two obvious canals. But as it reaches down, it kind of all molds in, into uh, into one. So we'll get on with the with the case. Um, um, when we look at the case here, um, it had been dressed. I think it'd been dressed by me, but I can't quite remember. And I've just placed a um, you know like a like a like a. GIC filling in there and and I am just ever so slightly just using an ultrasonic tip here just to clean the access up and, and open it up um, and I can see that once I have removed all of the temporary dressing that um, the access cavity isn't large enough and in fact um, we need to kind of open this up so in this case what we're going to use is we're going to use um, just a fast hand piece to be very 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 gentle what we, what we don't want to do is we don't want to perforate this tooth because the anatomy is so unusual. It'd be just so diff It'd be just really easy for you to get your fast hand piece in and uh, cut in places where you don't want to cut. So we're obviously going to use uh, our uh, high uh, strength ultrasonics and we're going to use our size 10K file just to kind of negotiate to investigate the inside of, of this tooth. And in fact, when we look once we've opened up the, uh, the, the the cavity, we can see that there is an obvious C shape here. And this corresponds with the C comb CPT scan here. And using the comb view CT scan, we're looking for these three orifices. Now, if you kind of look um, the, the, on the CBTT, you can only obviously see um, a, a distal canal. And, and I'm going to call it a distal canal. Um, because it's in the distal aspect of the tooth and we can kind of see a mesio uh, sort of um, uh, canal there but but, but th there is no obvious two spaces now um the, the 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 problem with cbcts is sometimes the resolution doesn't show anatomy that is actually present and that's a really really important um kind of thing you need to take into consideration when you're taking cone beam ct scans that it is not the panacea it's not the be all and end all of imaging and um you know you get they're, they're very very useful and you'll see all the way through this case that i am using um, the cone beam CT scan to kind of map out where I am, but we find a, a canal which isn't so obvious on the uh, on the cone beam CT scan, and in fact the canal um, was more obvious than the than the obvious one we can see on the cone beam CT scan.
So the first canal I'm going to look for is the distal canal, okay, and um, this is the this is going to be a bit of low hanging fruit. This is going to be really easy to find because when I've opened up the the cavity, um, it's it's there and it's obvious. And I'm just going to irrigate the the cavity prior to looking for uh, the uh, the working length. And um, what I'm doing now is I'm just going to place a, um, a size 10 uh, K file just to see if I can get a zero reading on the apex locator. And in fact, um, uh, I, I managed to get to length really, really easy in this in this canal. And that is a really, really nice feeling to have. You know, if you look at my a lot of my videos, it's nice to get to length quite easily. And essentially what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a size 25 variable high flex file to coronally shade the distal canal, ready for me to shape the whole working length. Now what I'm going to use is a Hyflex 1504. We know the working length and I'm going to use this um, very, very gently just to get just to get to length and just um, shape up that apical um, third. And then we're going to use the final shaping with our distal canal. And in this case, I'm going to use T mode. OK, what I am concerned. Well, first of all, what T mode is, is kind of like a, a 90 degree reciprocation back and two. And um, this is um, the, the reason why I've used this is I'm very, very concerned about uh, ledging this tooth because the anatomy is so difficult. So I'm just going to um, use the size 25 uh, in a reciprocated motion until I get to the working length and then I'm going to press uh, another button and then that turns it into into rotation to shape the, the the canal out so what we're going to do now is we're going to look for the mesobuchal canal um and i was kind of I'm, I'm looking for the most obvious canal that's seen on the cone beam ct scan which is shown in the top left corner here and i use lots and lots of irrigation um using a, a high flex 15 and also using the size 10k file and i just could not find this orifice and as I was um, sort of irrigating and ultrasonicking this tooth, when I had a little look, I actually found uh, the mesolingual canal. So this was it. This wasn't expected because I couldn't see it on the cone beam CT scan, and that's great. So essentially, what we do now is we are um, going to use the high flex fifteen just to open up this canal orifice, this mesolingual canal orifice that can't be seen on the CBCT. And what I don't want to do is I don't want to uh, pull this down too far because I don't want to ledge the tooth. And then you know it, 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 the the high flex fifteen was shaping quite easily. So I'm just going to check the working length of this mesolingual canal and I managed to get a zero reading, which is fantastic. And again, we're just going to use this size 15 high flex just just to open up this canal. But what I'm not doing is I'm not opening up um, with the size 25 high flex like I did with the distal. I'm going to sort of step wise the, uh, the, the, the sort of diameter of my files because I feel like if I go straight for the 25, I might ledge the tooth. So I'm going to use a 20 uh, um, uh, wave one gold file. So we kind of need to take stock of where we are at because we found a distal canal, we found a mesolingual canal, and there is obviously a, a canal which is blindly obvious on the cone beam CT scan, which um, which 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 can't be seen intraorally. And um, if we sort of have a little look at the cone beam CT scan, we can see the distal canal. We can see um, the mesolingual canal. Okay. And we cannot see this really, really obvious MB canal. And what I want you to do is, and this is this is absolutely fantastic using a cone beam CT scan, is that we can kind of see that the MB canal just fits underneath this uh, very large uh, composite filling here. And if we kind of draw the composite filling onto the uh, the the the, the the, the video here, you can see that I need to just remove a little bit of the uh, composite filling in this area to, to find this 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 uh, elusive canal. And this is the, the, the fantastic um, use of a cone beam CT scan, because I suppose if I were to just willy nilly have a little look around 
um, without the use of the cone beam CT scan, then there's a risk of me perforating this tooth. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to use these endo diamond tipped ultrasonic tips just to carefully remove this composite shelf. Um, super, super careful. I don't use any irrigants, so you've got to be super, super careful that you don't overheat the tooth or the tips because you can break the tooth and you can also damage the EDL or the, or the tooth itself. And sometimes when you're not being careful and you use these tips without water, the patient can actually feel the heat. And then we're going to use some high energy ultrasonic tips to try and break the orifice open. I love these um, using just a normal ultrasonic tip to try and investigate because sometimes it can just drop into the canal space and then it is just a succession of high and low energy ultrasonic tips and then obviously sometimes um, I need to just break out the fast handpiece just to remove the bulk uh, sort of um, uh, composite sometimes obviously when you're using a, a ultrasonic tip you can create like a kind of a ledge so we call it and then the fast hand piece just to, needs to remove the sort of coronal um, composite and then eventually we remove enough of this uh, composite filling and we're very very careful taking our time that we finally find the orifice with this size 10 uh, D finder and then essentially the, the protocol is exactly the same we're going to shape it with the high flex 15 glide path file we're going to use lots and lots of irrigation and then again we're going to shape it with the size 2005 um, wave one gold file um, it's it's it, it, it's a bit tough to get to length so um, essentially what i want to do is i don't want to open up this canal space too much i feel like that all of the uh the canals come into one anyway so what's the point in using a size 25 to open up the coronal portion of this tooth and um, if it's going to remove more dentin so essentially the reason why i'm finishing on a size 20 here is just to conserve dentin so what we're ready then for is the comb fit radiograph and then I'm going to place some size uh, 25 matched cones, high flex matched GP cones into the two canals which I have shaped with a size 25 high flex. And then I, at first, what I was going to use is I was going to use a uh, another matched cone, a 20 uh, matched cone. Uh, but when I placed this to length and then when I pulled this uh, 20 out, it was a little bit concertine at the end. And I sort of thought to myself, well, maybe I could get a size 25 high flex um, GP point in this canal. And, and actually, when I placed this GP cone to length, we actually managed to get um, all the way to the end. And if we look at the cone fit, it looks absolutely fantastic. Really, really, really nice. And then we're just going to do our uh, final disinfection protocol. Um, uh, in, in this case, as you know, if you look at a lot of my videos, it's um, we're using sodium hypochlorite 2% all the way through the, um, the appointment. And then what we're going to do is 17% um, EDTA wash ultrasonically activated and then a final wash with um, sodium hypochlorite and then obviously we need to dry um, the canal spaces with our paper points get it get it really really nice and dry and then um, we're going to obturate it with this uh, one fill um, biosceramic sealer and you'll notice that when I place it in the mesolingual uh, canal and I put the sealer in it fills um, uh, the, 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 the distal canal as well and then when I fit this mesolingual um, GP point to length just very very gently pushing it down uh, you can see that now uh, the, uh, the 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 sealer is filled all of these uh, canal spaces and it's just a case of placing the GP cones really 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 carefully to length not pushing it too hard because you can get this thing called vapor lock where the sort of GP point sort of bobs up and down and once all of the uh, the GP uh, cones are to nicely to length, we're going to just shear off the ex excess with our heated plug in. And shear is the uh, the, the sort of um, the word to use here. It's, sometimes it's really really easy, especially with these biostromic sealers, is to when you are removing the excess with your heated plugger is to pull the GP point out with um, the heated plugger. It's really really annoying, and. As we can see here, the x-ray looks absolutely 
absolutely gorgeous so we've got um, a really really nice kind of um, filling from top to bottom and then we've got um, this biosonic sealer is sort of filled this kind of unusual apical anatomy we've got no sealer puff there at all and it's not the end of the world if you get a sealer puff with this biosonic sealer but i suppose um, when we look at our peers it's 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 something that you you're not looking to do but um, but if it happens it's not the end of the world and there you have it you know um, next time you find you've got yourself a, a C-shaped molar, I'm, I'm hoping that this will give you a little bit of um, uh, confidence to, to, to tackle a case like this. Um, and listen, if you love the channel, um, please like and subscribe. And if you really, really love the channel, I have a membership program. The membership program for a very, very small monthly fee. Um, you can have uh, exclusive content in the membership area of YouTube. And um, like I say, it just um, it supports the channel. It makes me um, want to do these videos even more if I've got nice and lot, lots of support. Any questions, any criticisms, as ever, Pop it in the comments section below this video and we'll have a nice discussion and a debate. If you feel like something could have been done differently or you have any questions about the protocol today, again, just write it in the bottom and we can all have a really, really nice discussion about dentistry. And I'll see you next Friday. Bye-bye.